And take your Bible quickly with me in the book of uh, turn it in the in the um, in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, let's just read uh, for the sake of time. We're going just to read a couple of verses and then uh, we will uh, uh, talk about the topic that we call uh, uh, for a time such as this. Let's first do the reading and we'll do the rest. Uh, after I'm reading from the ESV, let me read Esther chapter 4 verse 12 uh, to 14. The Bible reads as follow. And they told Mordecai, what Esther said. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jewish, from for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Who knows, I'll read it again, part B of, of verse 14, and who knows whether you have come, we have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go gather or gather all the Jewish to be found in Susa. And uh, hold a fast on my behalf. And do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my young women will also fast as you do, then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Amen to the word of God. Amen. Glory to the living God, brethren, and a greeting again. We want to share something important with you right now regarding the word of God that uh, you may come to know and understand as a child of God the time in which we are living and uh, more so where, what is expected of us of God what is God is expecting everything every one of us to do in this particular time a couple of days ago, we preached uh, uh, on the topic that I call coronavirus, uh, uh, a divine judgment, an apocalyptic plague, or an evil plan. And uh, re during that message, which I will recommend to you to find on our, our, our YouTube channel, Grace for Life TV, we have tried to establish that uh, the world in which we are living, we, live, uh, we are living in the time of grace that Jesus Christ inaugurated. And during the time of grace, God is showing patience toward the world. God is showing mercy that many may come to be saved. And it is also important that uh, children of God, every one of us may come to understand, may know actually what God is expecting you to do. How how are you to react during the, this uh, moment? Beloved, this is exactly uh, what Mordecai actually told uh, Esther to do. This is a call that Mordecai made to Esther to wake her up that she may come to realize uh, the reason of her uh, being in that kingdom. Uh, to come to realize the position uh, that she was occupying in that particular time. Uh, why is it that God has allowed her to be in that time? And what was expected of her from God. It is important as well, Church of God, that all of us that to understand this time and really grab it and make the most out of it if we will know actually what God is expecting unto us. We call it a time of crisis, but beloved, let me tell you that those who have the understanding
beginning of time, those who have the discernment of time, like the sons of Issachar in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 12, I believe, verse 32, they know exactly what to do in this particular moment. The Bible tells us that the sons of Issachar, they had the understanding of time, the discernment of time, and they knew what Israel ought to do in a particular time, in any situation, any crisis, a good, any situation, good or bad, that they could find themselves. The sons of Issachar, they had understanding of time, and they knew exactly what they ought to do. Mordecai also, in this text, as we're going to discuss it today in the days to come, Mordecai has understood the time that his nation, the Jewish, the Hebrew nation was going through, and he knew exactly what to do in order to save his people. My brother, my sister, just before I go quickly in my message, let me tell you, during this moment, some people are crying, but some are using the opportunity to rise up. Some business are closing, but some others are, are opening up. There are people with the discernment of time who knows exactly what to do, how to operate, where to position themselves in this particular time. They know what God is expecting of them, and they are just acting according to the divine instruction, according to the divine ex ex expectation, and uh, they are moving forward. This is what we see actually in the text uh, that we have right before us in the book of Esther. The book of Esther is all about the story of a young woman by the name of Esther. Adasa, that was also her name. Esther, uh, 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 Esther actually found the, the story of this woman, Esther, who found favor before the king. And this favor was granted unto her by God providentially in order to later on save the nation, to preserve the nation of God. Hallelujah, people of God. This is a reason why God, Esther found favor before God. Well, if you read this book, you may notice that, uh, well, uh, the name of Esther is... Uh, is not the mention right there, but the name of God actually. The name of God is not mentioned in the book uh, throughout the whole book, uh, but actually God is the main character in this book. He's the one who's making sure that everything may fall in place because God was working toward the preservation of his people. You see, now what happened here, when after Esther found grace before the king, and she was loved and placed in the place, I mean, to, re to replace the, 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 the disgraceful uh, queen uh, Vashti, Esther became a queen in the time where Israel was living in the deportation in exile. Now the Bible said there was a man in that kingdom by the name of Haman. This man was elevated by ki the king in the second position. We'll talk more about him, I believe, uh, on Sunday. We'll talk more about this, uh, this man. Now, this man was elevated in charge to be the second in command in the in that in the king the Persian kingdom right where Israel was and the Bible tells us that whenever this man moved everybody will bow before him but there was a man by the name of Mordecai Mordecai happened to be Esther cousin. I know I've heard some people calling Mordecai Esther uh, 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 uncle. Mordecai is not uh, Esther, uh, uh, Esther uncle. Mordecai is Esther Esther a uh, cousin because but who adopted her, who raised her. You find that uh, in the book of Esther chapter two, verse eight and verse fifteen, uh, that gives us those uh, clarity right there. So Mordecai was uh, the one who raised Esther, and she, he was the one who also told Esther about the contest that was taking place uh, in the kingdom in the palace uh, when the king was about to choose uh, a new uh, a new queen actually now Mordecai being a Jewish uh, had refused to bow before this man Haman the Bible say Haman was told that Mordecai whenever you pass does not bow before you the man doesn't bow before you at all and uh, Haman became so furious, so much so, that he wanted to kill Mordecai. But when he found out that Mordecai was a Jewish, he said, no, I don't just want to kill Mordecai alone. I want to exterminate the entire nation of the Jewish. Let them all be killed. So he rushed to the king using his position of influence. He used it negatively. He went to the king saying this word, king, there is a people in this nation by the name of the Jewish. These people, they don't 
uh, adhere to your law, to your command. They don't obey the law of the kingdom. And by the way, if we don't deal with them, uh, we don't know what they will become uh, in, the, in, the, in the near future. Let a decree be written uh, that these people may be exterminated. Please follow me right there. Stay tuned right there. And uh, let this nation be exterminated. And if the king accepts to do to grant my request, uh, I will pay so much money in the king's treasury for uh, granting my request. So the request was granted unto him. The king gave him the signet ring, uh, and he wrote the decree that was sent throughout the entire provinces. That empire had about uh, 127 uh, provinces, uh, and the decree was sent uh, everywhere. And it was said wherever the people, the Jewish, found themselves. Uh, on this particular day, so and so, we're going to kill all of them. That was the threat to exterminate the nation of God. The nation through which Christ was later on to come through. The nation that God has chose to be, to chosen to be his light in the world that the world may come to know him. They wanted to be exterminated. This was not just a matter of Haman, Haman hatred, but the devil has a hand behind this, trying to stop the coming of the Messiah by exterminating all the Jewish. So God wouldn't have led him to, 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 to go with his plan. Now a decree was written. It's come to pass that Mordecai has come to hear about the decree. So he he dressed, he, t he tore apart, tore apart, tore apart, tore apart his, uh, his garment uh, and put on a sackcloth uh, and he went before the king's palace uh, and uh, the news uh, got to Esther. Esther was told, you cousin, we don't know what has happened to him. He's now dressing in sackcloth, uh, crying, mooning, going all over. We don't understand. Can you perhaps try to stop him? The Bible tells us that uh, Esther, as a, as a queen, sent to Mordecai some pairs of, uh, of cloth and say, do take this cloth, put them on. I don't know what is happening, but the Bible makes us uh, tells us this uh, that Mordecai sent a message to uh, to Esther to say this. No, it's not about uh, hunger. It's not about changing cloth. But the point is this: uh, our nation is in danger. We are about to be ex exterminated. We are in a time of crisis. You need to do something. Now there was a law in that land that no one went into the presence of God, not even the queen went into the presence of God unless if it has been called. So Esther said, I wasn't being called in the king's presence. How can I go there? Then as Mordecai replied to the man, he said, listen, listen, don't think that you are going to spare because you are in the king's palace. If you don't do something about the people of God right now during this crisis, I want you to understand that you will not be spared. You will not be spared. You, even your family also, will be exterminated. And Mordecai asked Esther this question and say, by the way, who also knows that if... It is not for such a time as this that you have become a, a royalty. If not, you become, who knows if God did not make you queen for a time such as this that the nation of God may be saved. Mordecai understood the time. Mordecai understood the season and Mordecai understood the divine plan. He understood why Esther has found favor before the Lord, a foreign lady, a slave for that matter, living in exile in a foreign land, who found favor to become a queen in that land. Mordecai understood. He said, Esther, wait a minute. You need to understand. It's for a time of uh, such as this, a time of a crisis, where many lives are on the line. Many lives are threatened. That is for this time, Esther, that you have become to royalty, and you need to understand Stand that and do something about it because if you don't do it, you don't do that. Both you and I, we are all going to perish. Hallelujah, people of God. It is for a time such as this that you became a queen. Mordecai wanted Esther to understand that. That's what also we want to, we are praying for, we'll be praying for for these three days, beloved. We want to understand the three things, beloved, which I want to share quickly with, with, with you during this. 
At this time, quickly, the first one, what does Mordecai, what was Mordecai implying for a time? You became a queen for a time such as this. Mordecai wanted uh, Esther to understand this, uh, that she was put in that position uh, by God um, in order to save life. Somebody say amen. He said, you were put in that position for times such as this. Which time was it? It was a time of crisis. It was a time where the nation of God was about to be finish the time where the, I mean the entire world of that time was the Jewish in that, in that empire they were facing threat of death they knew if nothing is done with they will be killed and Mordecai said Esther understand that you are in that position for such as this time time such as this he wanted Esther to understand that God does not do things in vain God does not place people just for the sake of placing them but he places his own in a certain position in the land, in the world, in government, everywhere, in every walk of life. God places his people in order to preserve life in the time of crisis. My brother, my brethren that are watching me, I want you to understand it is for a time such as this that you are occupying that position. I don't know whether you are a CEO somewhere. I don't know if you have a position of influence in your community, in your family, in your company, in the government, or wherever you are, Mordecai told Esther, you were placed in that time position for times such as this, uh, that the lives may be saved. A child of God needs to understand uh, that the grace of God is not for one person alone. When God favors you, it is not only for you, but God favors you today so that tomorrow you may advance uh, God's agenda. Somebody say amen. You have found favor that the agenda of God may be moved, may be pushed forward through you. I want somebody to say amen to that. You have found favor to be working in that position as the head of... A as a, as a head of, 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 of department for a reason, one reason which is to advance the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We may not be called like Esther to play a role at a high level, maybe in the government or wherever, but a child of God needs to understand the position that you have today, beloved. You found that favor before the Lord. God was pushing you right there in order to save the lives. You are not just there for you to enjoy that big office, sitting on that chair, swinging left and right and saying life is good, God is good all the time. No. The people of God need to understand it is for a time such as this that the Lord has saved us. It is a time such as, for a time such as this, the Lord that has protected us. Christians all over the world, pastors, men of God need to understand Understand. The church of God need to understand it is for a time such as this that the Lord has kept us alive and as the Lord has saved us. It is in this time that the Lord, the Lord is seeking for men of prayer, intercessors that can go before him, offer prayer that the lives may be saved. It is in time such as this that those that have a position of influence somewhere, they may not fold up their hands, they may open their mouth and speak on behalf behalf of the people of God that the lives may be saved. You found favor before God for a time such as this that many may be saved. You may find yourself that right before, beloved, this pandemic, the Lord has tremendously blessed you. Your business has increased. Your income has increased. You've been getting here and there, getting blessing from all over, beloved. The Lord was preparing you for times such as this, that you may turn an eye, a favorable eye, to those that are crying for hunger, to those that are in difficulties here and there. Mordecai say, understand one thing, Esther, you are in that position for times such as this. In this time of the crisis, the Lord has prepared you. He has brought you to that level that lives may be saved now. My question to you, beloved, when you're looking at this pandemic, considering the position of influence that you have, considering all the means that the Lord has blessed you with, are you using that to save lives? Are you using that to advance the gospel? Are you using it for the glory of God? Or are you using it for your own sake? 
the knowledge, the expertise that you have in that area, in one area or the other, are you using it for the kingdom of God? The Lord has granted it unto you for a time such as this. You may know, but pastor, how are you saying that? But when I was studying, I was making my effort, my personal effort. Nobody has helped me. Everybody has rejected me. I was not, I was not even a Christian. How can you say that I'm in this position because of God? Well, beloved, that's how it looks with your own eyes. That's how you feel. But let me tell you, you see in the book of Esther, the name of the Lord is not mentioned. It is done so intentionally to show that at time, God is silent in people's life. God does not appear in the forefront, yet behind the curtains, he is pushing everything. I would like to tell you that as you were going to study, God gave you life. God gave you the strength for you to study. When you were attending that interview, God was in that interview room with you. When they were deciding who to appoint in that position, God was there to influence their position, their decision that you may be chosen for which sake so that in this time you may save life. That the first thing that Mordecai was telling Esther, it is for a time such as this that the church need to arise, lift up their voice that lives may be saved. Secondly and quickly, second thing beloved, we have a situation, we, there was a situation right there. One side, a Jewish that were facing the death, the, 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 the death threat. On the other side, Esther Queen in a, in a palace, enjoying her life. And she has come to know about the decree, but she was enjoying her life. But Mordecai said, Esther, you need to understand it for times such as this, that the Lord has put you in that position. Secondly, what do we learn from this Mordecai statement? We understand this. Listen to this, beloved. In every crisis, God has already prepared and positioned people to serve his own. Hallelujah. Amen. I say this, in every crisis, in every worldly crisis, problem that may happen in the nation of God, in the family of the children of God, in the life of a child of God, you need to understand one thing. God has already prepared before you a person. God has already raised somebody in the position of influence for your preservation. Somebody shout amen. Beloved, you may think right now in this pandemic, in this crisis, you are left alone. Nobody is willing to help you. I want you to look well. I want you to stay on your knees and look around. Paul say there is no temptation that has ever taken man that is above our strength. But God is faithful. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond our strength. But with temptation, God has prepared for us an escaping route. Whenever temptation starts, God has an escaping route somewhere. In this crisis that the world is going through, comparing it to the crisis that the Jewish people also were facing in that time when they were crying some in provinces were crying thinking that they are going to be killed what they some of them they did not know that God has already put an Esther somewhere there in order to save them Mordecai has come to see that and Mordecai say oh you know what there is an Esther in that position for our salvation I want to somebody to understand this is also what Joseph understood when he set up with his brother in Genesis 15 verse 20. He told his brother the Lord send me here ahead of you that many lives may be preserved. Somebody give me an amen right there. Beloved, in this crisis, God has not left us alone. God has, has men in position of influence somewhere in order that our lives may be preserved. I say that there is an Esther for you somewhere that the Lord has already prepared before even you start entering the crisis. I say there is a crisis there is an Esther that the Lord has prepared somewhere. There is a Joseph that the Lord has prepared somewhere for us to be saved during this moment. For those of you that are going through trouble, difficult moment for during this moment, I want you to understand that there is an Esther that the God has raised. Beloved, God always has somebody. 
God always have somebody, always some have somebody for the preservation of people, of his people. In the book of John, we were told about Christ who was preaching some in the desert, desert, deserted places. The Bible says he preached so long that the evening had come. And his disciple came to him and said, Master, send them away that they can find food because we don't have anything to give them. Christ told them, give them yourself food. They said, but we don't have anything except the child who has three loaves of bread and two fish and what is that compared to the number of people that we have Christ took it they put it in Christ's hand and it feed many beloved let me open a quick bracket line and tell you like somebody say you know certain things it just depends in whose hand it found itself a bread three loaves of bread and two fish in the hands of a, a, a small child it means nothing when it comes to feeding 5,000 people but there's three loaves those three loaves of bread and two fish in the hand of Jesus Christ it found favor and it feed many when the disciple thought that people would die of hunger because there was no food God had prepared somebody to feed them in that time when the body of Christ beloved was hanging there naked on the cross with nobody to come and bury him Peter and all the disciples have deserted him in fear of the Jewish and the Pharisees let me tell you one thing God has prepared a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. This man arose, went to Pilate and said, Give me the body of Christ. I want to bury this man. Oh, hallelujah. Christ was hanging there on the cross, but God had already prepared somebody for times such as that to come and claim his body and bury him. My brother, my sister, brethren, everywhere you are getting the sound of my voice, I want you to understand there is a Joseph somewhere. There is a and Esther somewhere. You may not see them, but the Lord has sent them already before you for a time such as this, so that when you find yourself in that trouble, when you find yourself in that problem, that Esther may lift up his voice and say, wait a minute. You know, even when Joseph was going to his brethren, they were about to kill him. Now, when they plotted everything to kill him, God raised somebody by the name of Reuben, who say, why are we going to kill our brother. Why don't we allow him just to live? You see Joseph's life was in danger but God raised somebody to save him for a time such as that. There is also for you beloved somebody that the Lord has prepared for a time such as this for your salvation and in this time of the crisis the church of God, men of God, servant of God, intercessors and different children of God in different positions of the world. The Lord has put you there for the salvation of many. Thirdly, let me close with this, beloved. There's something else that we need we can learn from this story. Quickly, here it is. First, we say we need to understand we were born and we were positioned in the position we are for the salvation of many, not only for ourselves. Secondly, we need to understand in every situation God has an Esther that he has prepared for the salvation of his people. Thirdly, and this is why we are praying and this is why we're going to continue to pray even in our home, even after this, uh, this uh, broadcast will stop. This is where you're going to continue to pray. You know what? Listen. When the threat was given throughout the land, the Jewish life were in danger. But one thing, beloved, is this. Esther, who was to save them, was in the palace. She knew that the peace people were about to die. But Esther didn't do nothing about it. She had just the knowledge. But she didn't know anything about, do anything about it. It took a man like Mordecai to wake her up and tell her, Esther, it is you that need to do something. Church of God, my brother, my sister, I want us to understand one thing. That there can be Esthers that God has raised for our salvation. But those Esther, they might be dreaming. They may not be aware that they were chosen by God to save the people of God. This is where prayer comes in. Where the church needs to go on their knees and begin to pray. That the Esther's that are supposed to save the world in this time. That Esther's that are supposed to, to plead our case before the king. They may wake, wake up and come to realize that it's up to them. Mordecai told them, do you not know? as this that you became a queen it is for a time such as this my brother my sister it is for a time such as this but Esther was ignoring that Esther ignored that Esther was not even aware 
I want to some I want somebody to understand. Church of God, there are Esther somewhere there. Maybe you are that Esther for the salvation of those brethren, that group of people somewhere there. But up to now, you are not away. Maybe you are like the Jewish person right now, crying somewhere that your life is in danger, yet nobody is coming to your rescue. Just maybe, just maybe, your Esther is sleeping. This is why prayer becomes important. That's why I'm saying it is in times such as this that Christians need to go on your knees, pray unto God that the Lord may use them for the salvation of many. Pray unto God that God may also wake up some Esther that are sleeping, that they may come to realize that it's them that need to save us. Maybe your situation is still hanging on like that because my brother, my sister, your Esther has not just come to realize you are right there. You are not yet married. Maybe that brother has not yet come to see you are the one that the Lord has chosen. The problem is you need to shake that Esther a bit in prayer. You need to shake that Esther. Say, Esther, wake up. You are here for a time such as this. I am crying, but you are in royalty. You cannot enjoy in the palace while my life is in danger here. This is where now children of God need to go on their knees with their hands lifted up and begin to say, God, wake up some Esthers that they may begin to move, that they may begin to take the risk of moving. Let me tell you why prayer is important right there. Listen, even when Esther has come to realize that she was the one to do something, she moved, she told Mordecai, help me pray, fast the three days and three nights pray with me before I take a risk of going before the king. Beloved, you may realize that you are the one chosen to save a group of people due to your position where God has placed you, but you need wisdom, you need prayer as well before approaching every situation. Esther was there, but did not know that it was up to her to save people. This is a very situation, same situation that we see in the book of Jud Judges chapter, chapter 7. Judges chapter 7, where we see the man by the name of Gideon. Gideon was keeping food away from the Midianite, crying, crying to himself, what is going on, what is this, what is that? Gideon was crying, beloved. And he was crying before God and saying, where is the God of our father, the God who delivered them from Egypt, from this and from that? What Gideon did not know, there was no other man that God wanted to use. It was himself that was supposed to be used for the deliverance of many. You see, there are some Gideon, they are crying, yet God has chosen them already for the deliverance of others. There are some Esthers that are in Queen the King Palace no, we, who are not yet aware that they are the one to arise for the life of many to be saved. They are enjoying life, yet God wants to use them. Church of God, that's why we are going to pray. That's why we begin to pray right now that the Lord may release His grace. That every Esther that is about to arise in this time for our life, for our nation, that those Esther, in whichever position where they are, they may wake up and realize that they need to do something. Something. We need as well to pray that the church of God, oh beloved, that Esther's may find favor before God their king so that the nation may be saved. God may raise an Esther for you, for your preservation. God may raise an Esther for your family, for your ministry. But beloved, your responsibility is to pray for that Esther to continue to find more grace so that you may also find grace. But what do we not see in our time when a person sees an Esther that God has right reason up in your life you start fighting against your Esther no 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 the church does not need to fight the Esther the church needs to go on their knees to pray for Esther to be strengthened to find favor that they may move forward how can I get an amen from there somewhere we have seen Christian killing one another because you see a brother being blessed because you see a sister being blessed not knowing that sister is being blessed right now so that in the future where a certain trouble will come he may May can be your rescuer. Beloved, it is for times such as this that the Lord has preserved us. It's for a time such as this that the hands need to be lifted up. That the church may speak to God. That the church may speak one voice. No division. That pastors may speak one voice. Put aside all form of manipulation and bring the people of God before God. Intercede that our world may be saved. That people may be healed. That the lost soul may come to know God. It is for a time such as this 
that the Lord has brought us up to here. He has preserved us up to here that we may save others. He has preserved us up to here that we may intercede for some Esther. You may not be in a position of, of influencing some, some, something or some, somehow, but there are people who can influence things. What is your responsibility, church of God? What is your responsibility, man of God? It is to pray. If you are not an Esther, there is an Esther somewhere, then your role becomes of interceding. If you find yourself as Mordecai and the Jewish people, your responsibility is to pray for Esther, that Esther may arise, take a risk, for the people may be saved. If you realize that you are an Esther, don't fold up your hands and enjoy life alone, but arise, take a risk, speak for somebody, speak for the church, because God wants to use you in that position. Beloved, I wanted us to understand it for a time such as this, that the Lord has preserved us for a time such as this. For a time such as this, you have become to you a manager, a CEO, a director. You are in that position of influence that lives may be saved. Beloved, it's a time such as this that you need to yield unto God that he may use you for the salvation of many. For a time such as this. For a time such as this. For such a time as this, the Lord has put you in that position that you may influence positively some people for the sake of the kingdom of God. May my God richly bless you. Beloved, don't feel that you'll be left alone. Don't think God has abandoned us. He has left us in the middle of this crisis. In every crisis, there is an Esther. There is a Joseph that God has sent before us. Even in this time of pandemic, Esther's are there all over. Joseph are there all over. The church need to go into prayer that the Lord may begin to raise Joseph, that the Lord may begin to strengthen Joseph, that they may arise and take the risk that lives may be saved. Joseph needs as well to wake up from their sleep and realize. Esther needs as well to wake up from their sleep actually and realize that they need to speak for the salvation of many. That was our exhortation. That's where we're going to dwell in prayer after this moment. May my God richly, brother. Reverend, bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's for a time such as this that the Lord has kept you to be a blessing, to be saved as well. May God raise an Esther for you that your life, your family, South Africa, may be saved in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That's it from us today. We will continue with this uh, prayer again tomorrow. Today we wanted to lay the foundation that when you are at home praying that you may understand it's for a time such as this that you became an intercessor. We would like now to hear from you. Why don't you contact us through our contact that you find on Facebook, on YouTube. Use it there to contact us and let us know what the Lord is doing for you and what you want us to stand in prayer for on your behalf. And uh, please remember when you go on your YouTube, click that subscribe button. Give us a like there that the gospel may be, uh, continue to go around in the name of Jesus Christ. It is for times such as this that you've been kept. May the Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. And stay well, stay safe at home. We shall see you again tomorrow by God's grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen.